I am overwhelmed by the achievements of um, Arukaino, but we call him Ruki. So let's just, we'll just keep it as Ruki today. Every, all of us who know him well call him Ruki. So we'll just talk about, I'm, I'm just uh, completely taken by all uh, that he has achieved in so short a time, we've had all the awards, and um, there's just a long list of them. So it's really a pleasure to be here today for the formal presentation and book launch of the Memory of Seasons, uh, a collection of poems by Ruki or Arukaino Umukoro, speaking of nationhood, faith, life, and humanity. There's a paragraph in the preface which says uh, that these poems weave stories, reflections, imaginations, and love into an embroidered yarn. Of course, the preface was written by the author himself. So when you see and hear that um, the, the, the use of words and, and uh, the excellent uh, rhythm of the language, we know that it could only have come from a part of such great talent. It says they also navigate the seasons of love, the crux of humanity, and the nuances that genuflect a genuine concern for society. At the heart of the poet's codex, it's called according to codex, I believe it is, is God, nation, and humanity. End of quote. I mean, you know, sometimes people say that well, the Shoyinka is complex, you know. <laughs> so when you read some of his poems, you know. But I think that uh, it's, it's very good. You sometimes have to reflect when you read some of uh, Ruki's poetry. You have to think again and reflect. I agree with uh, his characterization of his poetry because I read a few of them myself. And I'm also glad to see uh, that the project of which he spoke to me about, which is this book of poetry about two, three months ago, has very quickly uh, come to term. I'm proud of his efforts uh, and the creativity that it took to deliver such a wonderful set of poems in a very, very short time. The chairman has already told us that uh, Ruki started as a child poet, and I think uh, uh, the MC has also told us his father, Mr. Godson Dean Mokoro, also a brilliant poet and writer, encouraged him from a young age to be creative and to use his writing gifts. We're told that when he was still in primary school, his father helped him publish uh, his first ever fiction story titled One Good Turn Deserves Another. It was published in the then popular uh, Democrats newspaper in Kaduna State, where, where he lived with his family at the time. The chairman was also very kindly offered to make a framed copy of that uh, publication available. I hope that we will also get uh, our copy. If not framed, we will we'll frame it ourselves. Two of his poems, Still Birth and Love Is, have been featured already on the BBC Network Africa and the West African Democracy Radio, respectively. But this would be his first full collection of poetry. And Ruki's themes, quite frankly, do not surprise me. The themes that he chose in his poetry do not surprise me. He is a conscientious public intellectual and a very restless social activist who believes in this nation fervently. And that shows in practically everything. It's demonstrated in what he talks about, what he writes about, and practically about everything. The theme of this event, uh, conversations on, on Nigeria's unity and diversity, challenges, opportunities, and benefits, is one of his favorite issues. And uh, I'm glad that the esteemed members of that panel spoke so thoughtfully and so insightfully on many of the salient issues. But one thing I'd just like to add to all the said, and already I think two or three of, our, of the speakers mentioned this, is that we need to talk up our country. We need to talk this country up. A big part of nation building is talking up your nation. Tolu and uh, I believe Malpue a few moments ago asked what sort of narratives about Nigeria do we push? 
What are the narratives that they push about Nigeria? The stories of nations written by others focus on their own agendas, the agendas of the authors. The negatives, of course, sell more and much faster. We must tell our own stories. I attend a lot of conferences. Or I used to attend a lot of conferences anyway. You know, and I, I will soon be attending a good number of conferences again. But it is only, frankly, and this is the honest truth, I have never found a place where, at a conference, where anyone is seeking ill of their country or running around their country. If it happens, it usually is in Nigeria. And that's the truth. Everywhere you go, no matter how funny the country may be, you will never hear anyone speaking negatively about their country. No. No matter how bad the country is. Today we hear that, uh, we know that in the US, so far, between uh, January and now, there have been well over 150 mass shootings. Mass shootings. Well over 150 in schools, in malls, in car parks, in places of work. People are just shot at random by one person just comes and shoots people. Yet, you will never hear, well, certainly, I mean, you wouldn't hear an America attend a conference and say, my country is unsafe, it's insecure, people are being shot every day. No, you won't hear it. Every country talks of their own country. Every uh, people of every country talk of their country. When we get home, we can criticize ourselves. Oh yes, we can say whatever we like, but we must talk of our country. We belong to one side, one side, and that side is the Nigerian side. Someone was talking about Arsenal a few moments ago. Arsenal will win this day, they will win this day. They will win. Because that's our, okay, that, if that's our side, that's our side. We'll take the side. They may not be the best. They may not win all the time, but that's our side. This country is our side. So we, we, we must talk of this country, and we must continue to talk it up and make sure that in every way that we can, we give the very best impression of our country. Our country is not its politicians. It's not even its religious leaders. It's not its business leaders. It's you and I. A country cannot be defined by any group of people, any political party, or any head of a political party, or whoever else. It's defined by us, those of us who are born Nigerians, born by Nigerians, or who become Nigerians by naturalization. Our stories must be stories of our aspirations, our dreams, and our hopes, planted in the successes of our journey, and the future of great hope because we have the incredible talents and material resources, and already on that journey, we are very, very far ahead. And I think that the poem, that poem, Imagine Nigeria, which um, is in the book, and, I, and one of the, uh, one of the uh, speakers spoke to it, um, I, think it was, I think it was the gentleman who spoke about it, but I'm going to read portions of it, just to encourage us, I hope. And in this poem, he says, imagine Nollywood movies winning Oscars every other year, from Kerr, Ejiro, Asabe on the global stage. Imagine the Super Eagles winning the World Cup, finishing top five on the Olympics medal table. Imagine food baskets all over the country, sufficient to feed 200 million people, yet enough to export. Imagine the UN asking third world countries to learn from the rapid development of the West. Only this time, it is the Southwest of Nigeria. Imagine the rise of groundnut pyramids like the Sphinx in the Northern Desert. Imagine those cattle on a thousand hills and valleys whose daily products are sold in Europe. Imagine Harvard in Jigawa, MIT in Kebi, and al Majeri in Council World. Imagine the best results in Africa, in the Niger Delta, where children swim in clean water, flowing from the creeks. Imagine Hawaii in Akwaibom or Bielsa, Disneyland in Rory. Like I said, now that's truly imaginative. 
uh, architectural masterpieces and a boat cruise in the Niger Delta. Imagine one naira to the dollar. Imagine 24 hour electricity in every village. Imagine PCM stories, PHCM stories for your children, old tales, fairy tales, everyone laughing about it. Imagine the first Nigerian astronaut taken off from the Abuja Space Agency. Imagine Tuo Shinkafa, Amala, and Bangasu on the regular menu list at the World of Astoria. Imagine that over 250 ethnic groups understand their differences, harness their diversities into strength to become a truly indivisible country. Imagine the one Nigeria tribe. Imagine a country with focused selfless leaders and strong institutions. Imagine a country where the rule of law prevails, a country where there is dignity in labor, where justice is a male, both for the rich and the poor. This Nigeria of our imagination is possible for as long as we have the likes of Ruki in whose hearts burn brightly the reality of this new nation. Congratulations again, Ruki. Uh, we will talk about uh, the donation. <laughs> Thank you all very much.